cave bears, but mostly vegetarian animal. An analysis of isotopes suggests that it was mostly vegetarian. Its teeth were very wide, and it made it distinctive from the more generalist grizzly bear. And those teeth that it had were bigger, wider, more grinding. Occupied by a massive temporalis muscle. The zygomatic muscles, jaw strength, power, musculature. Those surface of chewing, masseter muscle action, roughage, vegetation. And this is a bear that systematic search, carnivore. That is just fine meat, good quality vegetation. And that's what allows bears to be so big. A lot of muscle mass to power. Bears don't have a lot of jaw mobility. They just have jaw power and chewing, breaking strength. They also have canine teeth as they are carnivores. And as carnivores, they will also not forego the opportunity to eat meat, fish, salmon, animal flesh. Matter. Cave bear and the grizzly bear, vegetarian, hyper omnivore. There are no small premolars in the cave bear. The hyper vegetarian giant Eurasian cave bear who had a profound influence on the culture of hominins on the landscape of Europe, part of their legend and tradition, part of a ritual. Okay, the polar bear and the grizzly bear are still there on our cultural substrate to this day. Grizzly bears are the North American bear, the Canadian bear nowadays. The polar bear, of course, is the emblem of a changing world in which the cold and the ice are now a dwindling resource for the polar bear. The polar bear. There is a carnivorous species of bear. Its tooth battery has become reduced and thin, much more efficient processing of meat, of seal blubber. This is a very big individual polar bear. The polar bear skull is a different shape. The canine and incisor area of the polar bear is reinforced. Its frontal bones, its forehead is wider. Its zygomatic arches are much less troughed much different use of musculature around the zygomatic muscle. For recruitment of neck power when biting, killing seals. Carnivore, the polar bear, he's only interested in flesh. The proportion of the teeth, the tooth battery is different. So the jaws are different. So where does the giant short-faced bear stand morphologically? That is the jaw of Arctodus sinus. This is a Kodiak bear. This is a giant short-faced bear. This is significantly thicker and there's significantly more bone deposition on this jaw. All the same teeth are there except these teeth are bigger. It is also significantly bigger than the polar bear. Significantly, thi I mean, significant size difference. The cave bear. Despite being longer, the cave bear is nowhere near as stout, as thick, coronoid process with a lot of use. Grooves and valleys and, 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 and shaped muscles have scarred this thing quite hard. The incisors, tightness around their incisors, the canines which are just round, stout and gouging, grinding hydraulic press action. Premolar, premolar, carnassial. On the first molar, 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 crushing, large surfaces, large surfaces, large surfaces, a lot of wear. Wow. Look, look at the, the, I mean, vaulted giant. I mean, this was the forehead of the giant bear. And this was pneumatized, I mean, quite like a hyena, but like on this sort of scale. It's where all their bones become fused together from immense jaw pressure. A lot of use. Like, like, could you, like, you gotta imagine temporalis muscle, deep groove pockets. I guess a lot of chewing, a lot of chewing of hard food. This bear is related to the Andean spectacled bear. Lots of little premolars. I think that is typical of the Tremarctine bears. Incisors, very well worn. 
almost like a, like a herbivore, like a horse, worn down the wall, almost like a sharp, sharp edge. Premolar, 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 molar, molar. It's three ducts, a pad of tissue, have a link to their nose. And they sip the air for smell, for taste, for different chemical signatures. This is a ridge that's very well developed in the bears. It's not very well developed in Arctodus, but look at the width of this. And when bears kill, they shake something violently. Cave bear. Sagittal crests, peaks of stress. Cracking and breaking of hard foods versus processing hard material continuously. And then all of a sudden, this thing would come sniffing along from miles away. Long-legged, rangy, giant, an open country bear. Longer-legged and rangy than bears alive today. A niche that is no longer existent, and I think it was the same niche occupied by Dino Crocuda. Hyper carnivore scavenger, bone cracker, bone breaker, an occasional seasonal vegetarian that relied much more heavily on flesh, animal matter. I don't think he was a hunter. I don't think he was a hot pursuit carnivore, but I think he could run, not fast, but for a long period of time, and then chase something down, perhaps something that was weakened. Perhaps a young mammoth, perhaps a camel, perhaps a young and inexperienced lion, perhaps a horse, perhaps a bison. And it would just take over that carcass, a single king amongst fang-toothed folk with which it shared its land with, the lion, the saber tooth and the wolf, which were all social to a much wider degree than this thing was. Very few specific animals got to this size because it takes a long, long time of love and attention and care and defense to build a child like this. And when they reached this size, they were a very significant force on the land. This was a very cool video to make and I'm very glad for this opportunity. I thank Bone Clones for providing these casts. Thank you for tuning in.